Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this session today. Um, let's welcome um, our next speaker. Uh, his name is Hassan Ablinabi, uh, Mechanical Maintenance uh, Deputy Director of Alzina Tissue Mill Company and leader of the Mobius uh, Connect of Egypt. Um, we're going to hear what he has to say as he shares his view on the practical approach in oil contamination control. Um, Hassan, I give it to you. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here again, second time for senior in LRVS. Uh, I feel honored to be part of this huge summit and uh, it is my pleasure to <laughs> represent Mobius Connect. Uh, thank you all to uh, for who's attending now. Uh, today I'm going to discuss with you uh, a topic that is near to my heart. Uh, it is a practical approach in oil contamination control. Uh, this webinar will be discussing some of the essentials, uh, but at the end of it, we're going to discuss in details like an action plan if you are new with a plant and want to control the contamination, what to do. But uh, let me first uh, introduce myself. I'm Hassan Abdel Nabi. Uh, I'm a mechanical maintenance deputy manager at Alzina Uh I have 10 years of experience in maintenance variability improvement. I'm a brand investor and digital community leader uh, at Mobius Connect, uh, machine lubrication analyst level one from ICML, uh, certified vibration category three from Mobius Institute, uh, Six Sigma Green Belt, and SMRP. And I will begin today with a quote uh, All of our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. And uh, this quote for, was for uh, Walt Disney. And uh, in Mobius, we have a big dream. Uh, our dream is uh, to create a community that can have a, a huge impact uh, on changing the industry, uh, creating a platform that can help other um, uh, ex experts in order to share the knowledge and other uh, industrial uh, people who are willing to enhance their knowledge uh, to to be here and share their thoughts with us. So in Mobius Connect, you can engage in live feeds, you can expand your, your network, you can start by creating your profile in order to connect with the industry professionals. We, Mobius Connect has a lot of uh, technologies that can be covered in their knowledge center. So we have webinars, articles, technical studies, uh, podcasts, all over aspects of reliability and condition monitoring. Just go to Mobius Connect and see. All of this media is free. All of this media is for, for you to explore and share with others. And uh, you can join your local community. Uh, if you don't see you, your country as a local community, you can become a community leader like me and start sharing your thoughts about, about the world, about the industry. So you can help us by attending our live events, share the posts we make uh, via social media. Uh, you can help us spread the word by telling others about the community. And you can post your articles, or even if you want to create your own webinar, just reach out to us and we can help you on this. So without further ado, we now start our presentation and we start with an important slide. So the function of a lubricant. So the lubricant, he, we use it to reduce friction. We use it to control wear, control corrosion, remove contaminant and remove heat. And of course, in hydraulic and power transmission. So what are main types of oil contamination? So we have external contamination and internal contamination. So external contamination come from the environment like dust and dirt, water, humidity, uh, bad practices, of course, contaminated tools or cross contamination, of course. And the internal contamination can come from surface degradation or oxidation, or even at the end of life of the oil, the depletion of additives can create this internal contamination. So there are some common contamination in the oil that we're gonna discuss briefly here. So we have abrasive, air, a coolant, cross-contamination, water, and fuel. 
so abrasive. This is the huge enemy, okay? So this is dust can come to your equipment from the environment. So I work in tissue mill. So we have fine dust from the bulb itself that can contaminate our lubrication units. Uh, it can come even from the sort, from handling and storage, from the transportation of the oil itself. It can come from the environment. Uh, every aspect of the environment is trying to get inside your equipment. This all can create contamination for you. So some metal parts can come from normal wear, like aging, but some can come from the buildup of the, this contamination in order to fit uh, beneath uh, the fit inside the oil fill and create a third body abrasion and start increasing the wear rate of the metal itself. Next we have air. So air is like uh, a, a huge problem when you try to transmit power. So if you're gonna transmit power in your brakes and you have an air inside the system, when you start hitting the brakes, it will not work. So it's uh, even uh, there are different type of air. We are more focused in the entrained air. So entrained air can create cavitation or causes corrosion or even increase the oxidation. And this could lead to thermal degradation. So also when you leave it more than the amount that can be trapped inside the oil, it can become a free air or foaming. So affecting the level of the, of the tank and give you more even problems in the, in, in the oil. So the coolant. So this is typically an engine problem. So if you have any gasket that leaks, that can, that this gasket is separating the, the coolant from the oil, this is gonna lead to this contamination. So oil contamination by coolant may thicken the oil as the impact of water creating a sludge that can damage your equipment. So of course, cross-contamination. Cross-contamination can come from bad mentality at the beginning. So if you have some remaining of uh, an oil and you want to fill up the tank and you say that it will nothing happen, so let's put it here and see what happens. This can lead to cross-contamination. Both of them may eat each other. The additives itself can uh, uh, can can, can uh, fire, kill each other. Let me let me rephrase it like this. So if the oil you try to help you start attacking each other, and at the end of the day you have a lower efficiency of your viscosity or lower efficiency for the oil fill that creates to more problems. Of course, the huge enemy is water. So if you can see in the picture, so this is oil that is contaminated with, with water. So water is a huge disaster. Uh, I have seen it in, uh, in my factory and uh, struggled in order to remove it uh, with the lower cost as possible. So uh, oil is a, is a contaminant that can harm your equipment by creating corrosion and even creating cavitation that can affect, uh, also can affect the, the film strength that will lead to more wear that when are, at the end of the day, if they can become a sludge, uh, it's, 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 it is the end of your oil. You need, to, you need to remove it. So whatever the cost, you need to remove it. Finally, we have fuel. So it's called fuel dilution. When you have bad seals in the combustion chamber uh, uh, and some oil, uh, some fuel can escape due to pressure to the oil, it, it lowers the viscosity of your oil, creating at the end of the day, a, a problem uh, from mixing these uh, two fluids together that can lead to disasters. So does the size of the contaminant really matters? Uh, if you can imagine the human hair is 70 microns and what we are trying to, to, uh, to fight here is uh, 12 microns or something like that, even four microns or five microns in, in the servo motors. So yes, the size actually matter, but there, there is a, a application for use, I have seen it before, when you talk to a technician and the technician guy come and take the oil and try to move his hair, fingers around it and see nothing, it's, it's clean, let's put it there. So let's, let's make sure that he will not see any contaminations that 
that can affect our equipment. Because if you can see that some of the components have an, a thickness of uh, three microns and the, your eyes cannot see uh, uh, be, be beneath 40 microns. So you can take it and try feel it, but this is a nothing, uh, not a good indication to see uh, if, your, if your oil is working or not. So imagine that there is a third body abrasion or there is a contaminant is bigger than the oil thickness, as we said, that's three microns or four microns. It's gonna start creating uh, a crack due to this uh, collision between the three bodies together that's gonna lead to a network of cracks with time. At the end of the day, it's gonna start to become a spool. So this is uh, can be uh, eliminated by removing this contaminant that is, uh, is hard to uh, to detect with your own eyes. That's why they created the ISO 4406 in order to come up with a standard in order to review with each other how is the contamination level or how is the cleanest level in, uh, in others say that say we can say it. So also we can come with uh, with a normal uh, cleanest level and the recommended cleanest level. So if you can increase the efficiency of your uh, oil uh, cleanness level, you will increase the lifetime of your oil maybe by 10 or 11 times, depends on the level of cleanness you have reached. And of course, this can reduce the amount of uh, secondary damage from this contaminants that can lead to more problems. So uh, at the end of the day, from this slide, I just want to say you need to clean your oils and you need to control this uh, this uh, this this tank because it's an asset at the end of the day and if you're gonna uh, uh, treat it uh, in a proper manner it's gonna give you the desired outcome from from its application so oil contamination control from my point of view it's like a journey uh, start with enhancing uh, the utilization of oil analysis but at the same time, trying to enhance the lubrication practices. So if you enter a factory and you uh, don't know where to start, uh, if you follow my advice, because this is uh, from my experience, from uh, from an actual an, an actual uh, uh, actual success that I reached with uh, with my oil uh, oil lubrication program in my factory, you need to work uh, on both edges in order to uh, to see what you are attacking and try to attack it with a proper way. So the first stage is oil analysis. You need to know where you are. So first of all, you need to determine the asset you need to care about. So you need to see the criticality of this asset. Is it a huge tank? Is it uh, uh, it's going to harm the production? You need to see it. Uh, in order to account for it or exclude it at the beginning of your program. The next step from my point of view is to search, search for a third party that can give you a quality in, uh, uh, in inspection or can give you the proper uh, level of uh, trustworthy in, in the results that you're going to send. Uh, of course, they're going to help you uh, in taking the sample from the correct location using the correct method and performing the proper uh, uh, procedures in order to get this sample. And all of this is just to determine the current state of your oil. After that, they can help you in establishing the, the desired state. So they can tell you that uh, you need to increase the cleanness level with this, or you need to fight this kind of contaminants because they are affecting your oil. So they even can help you with uh, determining the, the limits or the alarm limits in order to continue monitoring your oil house. But uh, this is their side of the problem. Uh, the, this is their side of this problem. But your side is to understand the, the report at the first place and uh, manage the data in, in a proper way in order to come up with a corrective action in order to preserve your oil house. So after you are after you know what you are doing and what is the current state of your oil, you can see what is going to, uh, what is needed to be done in order to fix this problem. Uh, but you need to uh, 
to know for sure that uh, the oil sampling or the oil test must have uh, the flow properties like viscosity and acid number, and also of course should have contamination so, uh, like particle count and mixture content. And uh, in severe cases, you need to ask for real particle analysis in, in order to perform analytical ferrography in order to find the, the root cause of this problem. Now we're gonna discuss some of the interesting subjects. So enhancing lubrication practices. So contamination can be prevented <laughs> or can be removed. So we can start by preventing it, uh, starting from handling and storage, uh, maybe filtering the new oil, uh, use good quality breezers or upgrade the seals in order to prevent contamination from entering your uh, tank or your asset as the first place. But sometimes you are not successful, and even if you, if you try to be 100% uh, uh, sure that you are preventing the contamination, sometimes you need to go to the removal section. So you need to upgrade your system filters, or you even need to consider an offline filtration. Uh, from my point of view, you need to work with both of them, with the prevention and also the removal. When you enter a factory and you don't know from where to start, you need to, first of all, uh, check the lubrication plan, uh, see if reaction acid and see the OEM recommendation of this uh, oil and or and see if it's actually on the uh, on the site or not. After performing this step, which is an important step, but sometimes it is easier to perform it uh, if you know if you have the data from the OEM. Uh, you need to work on both sides. You need to fight. Uh, the contamination on the two uh, frontier, the prevention side and the removal side. So the prevention uh, from receiving and storage, of course, you your oil is not clean. If you get it clean from, uh, if you get a new oil, it's not a clean oil. You need to, to filter it in order to reach the certain uh, cleanness that you need. And of course, outdoor is not a solution. But if you are new in a factory and come to the top management and say that, as they are storing oil outside and we need to build a storage tank in order to storage facility in order to put the oil inside it, is they may uh, treat you as a, as a crazy person or even uh, maybe hit you or beat you up in order to, because you are talking about uh, spending more money that even the budget of the top management can consider to spend in the current moment. But you need to convince them that uh, being outside is you are, uh, in a risk of uh, contaminating your oil even before inside put it inside your uh, your your asset and uh, at the end of the day we all know that uh, there is a good image that we all need to reach that you have a storage facility which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, dedicated canisters and uh, colored uh, barrels in order to separate and remove the human error from the formula of uh, fighting the contamination. But any small step can be done. If you are outside and you cannot do it, you can fill the plastic uh, bags in front of the oil or even try to maneuver it in order to avoid this kind of contamination. Next, we have the, the filling or the using this oil in the first place. So if you have a huge tank, of course, if you have a filtration system and the breezer, this is a, a dream for some companies. Uh, but if you do it, you make sure that the oil is uh, going to be served for a long time if you handle it properly from this tank to your asset. That's why you can use different type of canisters that can it's, not, it's available from different vendors. Uh, I just use uh, this case uh, a photo, uh, but you can use this in order to uh, put the oil inside your tank and make sure that you are preventing the contamination from this oil and preserving the cleanest level that you struggled and you spent money on on your oil. Enhancing the breather quality, of course, uh, when you uh, enter a facility that doesn't uh, uh, work on his lubrication reliability program and you introduce this kind of breathers, they might say that uh, this is uh, too much to, to do, why we should do this breezer, and uh, what, is, uh, what, is, uh, what is the benefit of this breezer. But uh, from, 
a piece of advice. If you see this kind of, uh, of breezers, you need to kill it at once and try to boot or solve this solution because you are introducing humidity, you're introducing dust, whatever the environment will be inside your uh, your asset and uh, whatever is uh, going to go inside your asset, you will spend much more money in order to remove it back again from this uh, from this asset. So uh, contamination control is a journey, but uh, if you are not successful with the prevention, as we said before, and you need to come up with a solution for, for removal, there are some steps that you need to consider, uh, like uh, what is the volume of this tank, uh, the oil type, uh, the oil temperature, oil contamination problem at the beginning. This can be done after the oil analysis, of course. So it's particle oil degradation, sludge, varnish, or even water. And this type of application and uh, the machine operation hours per, per day. But after you gather this information and you get offers from different vendors, you need to uh, check the operation cost of this filtration unit per minimum for five years in order to compare a true apple to apple because some vendors give you a lower cost for the asset itself, but the filtration is much more expensive. At the end of the day, you're going to spend more, uh, but they uh, distribute it like an installment. Uh, of course, you need to agree with them on the, uh, a certain cleanness level that you're going to uh, guarantee that you're going to deliver for your uh, asset. And of course, this cleanness level, uh, the, comp uh, the, the equipment that you're going to deliver uh, can do it. So you need to review if they are capable of performing this, because a lot of uh, of companies, as I was discussing with uh, Arturio, that they hit and run, they give you the, the equipment and they're gonna escape and you need to even to remove this unit from the surface or put, uh, or try to become a slave on, on this vendor and try to purchase more and more in order to get the cleanest level uh, for your equipment. So, uh, at the end of this uh, session, I'm going to uh, discuss just the new era. So IIoT is a, a trendy subject. Uh, and the, from my point of view, if uh, the technology uh, is not fully utilized, you actually don't need it. Uh, yes, everyone was searching for the new technology or the new trend, but it is uh, you need to make sure that your uh, company or your facility or your situation requires this kind of technology at the beginning. So, of course, there are now portable oil analyzers that can give you uh, uh, instantaneous results in the field. If you need it, you can do it. Uh, of course, online particle counters, I have uh, three installed in my facility that can give you particle count, temperature, the, and also give you the water content, which is good to give an indication but for me, I think that it is, has a huge impact on the reliability culture itself. So our technician is going every day and taking results of this condition uh, online particle counter. So from his point of view, he knows that if these values increase, there's something wrong with the oil. And this is a huge win that you can uh, feel it in the, in, the, in the performance of this operator. Of course, there are mutual sensor or oil quality sensors that can even trip the machine or even give you an alarm or or even let's let's go the the further mile and say that's gonna send the data to the cloud and you can reach it from your phone and you can monitor everything throughout your phone but if your company is not ready for this technology uh, uh, what's next so you can uh, even some can discuss that you can uh, after you get these results, uh, uh, an, online, an offline filtration unit will start working in order to save uh, money if you don't want to make it run 24-7. Uh, all of this is, is, is great. So what next? What next? From my point of view, uh, technology is going in exponential rate, but the culture is not going in this exponential rate. Uh, this is what I believe. That's why I all the time I try to say it, because... Uh, it, you need to work with the, uh, you need to work with the culture at the beginning in order to make use of this technology. So, in conclusion, and I hope the the slides was okay for you. 
uh, uh, oil contamination control is a journey. It's, uh, it will not be just one uh, one action that be done. It requires teamwork. Not one can perform it. Yes, we need a champion or need a, a team leader that has a vision to increase the, the lubrication reliability in, inside the, a plant, but it's all about teamwork. And believe me, any small changes, any small change can create a uh, can create a huge difference. So if you enter the plant and you convince them to switch from manual greasing uh, gun uh, to pneumatic uh, greasers that have a dedicated type of grease, this is a huge win. If you convince them to perform oil analysis every three months, every six months, any small change can create to a huge impact at the end of the day. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for attending this session. Uh, you can get in touch with me throughout all social media. Uh, and I thank you again for the opportunity uh, to become here with you today. Thank you. Hassan, thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. Um, your work really resonates with us. And uh, we have a couple of questions here. Um, we have five minutes, four minutes to get through. Um, okay. All right, let's see. Let's do it. Uh, all right, um, first question from Dugard. Mm -hmm. um, hi, I'm uh, Dugard from Cameroon. Is contamination by air a big problem for engine, diesel or petrol oils? Okay, you are in Cameroon. So you live in Africa like me in Egypt. So dust is in, in the air. So if you are not controlling dust coming to the air, so it's gonna uh, create this wheel on the piston cylinders. Uh, this is gonna create a huge disaster uh, making more oil escape to the oil combustion chamber and even some fuel that can escape to the crankcase. So air filtration is uh, is important for uh, diesel engine. Even our cars, we have filters in it. Even uh, uh, any, uh, but uh, the problem is uh, no one can feel this impact because uh, I used to work in the diesel industry. Uh, I was responsible for maintaining 140 diesel engine. Uh, the problem is that people used to forget. So they used to uh, see that this engine is running for four years or uh, 1,000 hours. So this is okay. This is enough for him. Uh, but what we are trying to enhance or what we're trying to infect others with this idea is we can extract more life from this uh, from this asset or this equipment. That's why we are trying to prevent this kind of, uh, of contaminants in order to reach out or increase the lifetime of, of the asset. So of course, uh, contamination or air contamination is a huge impact, can have a huge impact on, uh, on diesel engine. Excellent, excellent. Um, we have another question from Kevin Albert, an interesting one at that. How to control the grease contamination? <laughs> Uh, let's talk from the new technology and go less. Okay, so the new technology uh, have a, a dedicated uh, canister filled with a, a certain type of grease that is uh, that fits the application, and this is installed permanently installed on the equipment, and it uh, you can put a ultrasonic sensor or something like that in order to give the pulses of grease without any contamination. So this is the top uh, that we can, could reach now in the industry, but we can lower the expectation a little bit. If you have a good uh, lubrication guy that uh, is properly trained and give him a, a proper tool, uh, he can uh, give you uh, a good result using this. So the contamination of the grease, you need when you fill the canister, uh, you need to do it in a, a controlled uh, environment control area that uh, not to get uh, mixing grease or put it in the same uh, gun, or uh, you have only one pneumatic greaser and you running around the factory with it, putting red grease with green grease with blue grease. And uh, at the end of the day, you give, uh, you give, the, 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 give your asset a cake that has a different shape and different color that doesn't give you the, the proper uh, uh, grease. Uh, requirement to uh, 
to control lubrication. So from my point of view, uh, if, if you want to control grease contamination, first of all, uh, if you're uh, capable of performing uh, a centralized system that can put uh, uh, a controlled uh, grease, you, you lift the barrel and put the new automatic greaser and the system runs until the end of the barrel, so you are excluding a lot of uh, problems using this. But if you don't have this kind of, of money or you haven't uh, actually built a, a true business case to the top management, you need to have a good lubrication guard that knows that uh, a small a small change he can do will create the, uh, the impact, a huge impact at the, at the end of the day. Excellent. We have a hard stop at 11.30. Thank you very much, Hassan. There is additional questions. Hassan, we'll get back to you um, in, in uh, you know, within time. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and we'll see you the next show. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mark.